are bad enough, enough. As, as, they, as they are right now. And then people have to cope with all kinds of costs whilst incomes are generally fixed. Sure. So from the same income, you are coping with higher school fees, you health have to care. cope with health care, you transport. have to cope with transport, higher fuel charges, and all kinds of things. And see, whether we like it or not, these are some of the things that put pressure on people to steal public money. Sure. Yes, I mean, if you, because you see, survival is the most basic instinct of any person, of any human being. Sure. You want to survive. And so in the process, if you are pushed too much, you begin to get too creative, negatively creative. Sure. And then that's what leads to some of the things that we see. I'm not making excuses for it, but I'm saying that these are the realities that will come with it. It's unfortunate because, again, a part of it will be that there will be a whole lot of dislocation. Right now, you have a whole lot of dislocations going on in families. Sure. Husbands who can't really take up their responsibilities, wives who can't continue to bear because they've born for so long, sure. and some whose bearing capacity is even very, very limit, limited. And so there's tension in many homes. And so these things are going to get compounded. I think that governments must co come out with uh, better um, um, arrangements to ensure that there's some soft landing, that there's, there's some the vulnerable uh, groups, the, 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 the poor. Uh, the lower level cadre gets some, um, some, some. I don't know. I don't know. Some, some sort of some, mercy. Yes, I don't know because I do not know if somebody has been having challenges paying fifty six naira or fifty six. Yes, fifty six naira. naira. Now, so you want him to pay like a hundred percent increase? Sure. That's fifty six and another fifty six. So a hundred twelve. A hundred twelve. It's just down by so one naira. One naira. So a hundred percent increase, just like that. When it is not going to get a hundred percent increase in salaries, yeah. as a business person, you can't mark up your your profit a hundred percent because possible. then you you won't even see anybody. So these are the, they are very tough issues that we all have to grapple with, and we don't have to make the common man to be the one that carries the can. True. So now on the on the other side, we're going to talk about the economy while talking about the subsidy. How can one trillion or more be, how can it affect our economy if it is implemented? Well, the, uh, the, you mean the, the, the subsidy, the, the one, yeah, no, the subsidy, the one trillion narrow subsidy on the economy, how would it affect our economy? Well, um, the truth is that if you at least give some people some breathing space through subsidies, then you can be sure that their creative energies are released. Yeah. They're going to be able to say, okay, now that I have this breathing space, let me think, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can But when they are frustrated, when they are tight, tight, when they are, when they are I mean, squeezed, the wall. Uh -huh, when they are squeezed within such very tight uh, budget, then even their thinking capacities will be limited. So I think that is a positive one. I think it's a positive one if you have um, the, a, a subsidy on the economy of, of, of that trillion that you're talking about. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. I think it's positive. Okay, it's positive. So now let's talk about um, the implementation of a hike in electricity. The president, that's Tinubu's administration, have said that they would not increase the tariff unless and until we have stable electricity supply. Listen to me. That's politics. That's the politics that government engages in all the time. Okay. They will tell you, for example, that will, there's not going to be, for so many years, they will tell you that there will be no increase in fuel price uh, until this, this, this is done. In fact, there was a time they entered into a pact with labor and said they were going to get a CNG buses. They will do this, they will do that. That's before, the recent one? No, be, no before this one. Okay. Before this one. I think it was under Buhari with uh, uh, Ayuba Waba. Okay. Uh, the Ayuba Waba led NLC. Sure. And they agreed that, oh, some things will be put in place before. But by the time they went ahead to increase, <laughs> the rates, Nobody a whole lot of those things that. were not taken care of. So um, I, I find it very difficult to, to flow with promises by government. When they say these things, they say a whole lot of them tongue in cheek. They say a lot of them, they make those promises knowing from the very beginning, knowing ab initio, that it's not meant to be fulfilled many times. But they, I mean, it's like... Um, uh, let me not use this uh, your bar proverb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> understand anyway. <laughs> no, no, no. The truth is, it's not too good for TV. So now, <laughs> no, no. Let me not use it now because <laughs> okay. you see, if you have if you have a partner that's a lot um, 
stronger than you or, or if you have a sparring partner, for example, let me use it that way. Okay. That's not exactly the thing. But if you have a sparring partner and uh, the, the energy level is very different, is huge, okay. and then you people now have to relate together like on the same level, you, you, are, as, you are as dead as a dodo from the beginning. Um, government has all the powers. And so when they implement what they want to implement, in fact, when they say some of those things, it's just for the, uh, for the optics. It's just for politics to say uh, at least we told them some nice things. We, we try to make them feel good. You know, you can make the people feel good while you are delivering blows on their heads. True. And that's what Possible. happens a lot of the time. That's what happens because if everything was being done according to how they prepare our minds and toast us, <laughs> then life wouldn't be this hard. <laughs> Mr. Elmogen, <laughs> you know, the government but, 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 uh, is toasting like li us. Life is about toasting, generally, True. I think. True. Yeah, but, uh, some of us who didn't know this secret, I mean, didn't have too many, much attention from the other gender. The other gender believes that they should be toasted and told some beautiful things, even if they are not true. True. Yeah, and tell True. them that you take them around the world, even if you have never got into the airport. Oh, Mr. Elmogen. No, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so that's what government does with the people in a lot of time. True. Yeah, and again, when you look at it, it's better than being too... I'm learning, too. I'm, I'm saying this out of some personal experience, that people don't enjoy the truth that much. Sure. If, especially the truth is tough. Mm. So you would need to couch, you would need to say whatever it is as diplomatically as possible. So sometimes when you even tell them to go to hell, they enjoy it. They, they begin to look forward to the trip. And I think that's what government does a, lot, a whole lot of time. Okay. We will take a short break. We're talking about energy on politics and business TV. This is Business Focus viewers. We'll be right back after this. Hello there. Worried about complexities and dynamics of business in Nigeria? On Business Focus, we bring you insight from the forefront of industry innovation, business news, latest figures from the stock market with in-depth analysis and even market survey. Let's journey through the ever-evolving world of business and economics where we decode the latest market moves and provide you with the knowledge to navigate the intricate web of business challenges. This is Business Focus. Discussing energy, recapitalization and all matters energy. Um, Mr. Omogon, welcome back from the break. Thank you. So now let's talk about energy some more. We mentioned that there's inadequate pricing, there's patchy revenue collection, and also there's um, dilapidated national grid. What can we do to, uh, um, to um, f uh, make those effective again? No, I think that um, you just mentioned recapitalization. Okay. And I think that um, if you notice, those who bought some of those uh, 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 facilities in times part uh, under the Jonathan administration, you'll find out that a whole lot of them have been taken uh, over by banks right now because they didn't meet their obligations. Sure. Now, so what that means is that they didn't have the financial capacity to really do it from the very beginning. If you notice also, in spite of the fact that it had been sold to them, government had to come in several times to support the system. Sure. That was funny. If, you, if somebody, I mean, I don't understand that. I've sold it to you. Yeah, I've sold it to you, you are in charge, the profits are yours, and then I come in again to... They definitely you. say the profits are not enough because they're not charging as much as they should. Good. So, but, but first of all, is the fact that your facilities are also not good enough to, to render the service. Because if you render enough service, many of the times, when things concern the populace, it should be a question of turnover. It should be the higher that you're able to, uh, the higher number that you're able to meet, the, I mean, render the service to, then whatever small markup is there will become huge. But if you are just, for example, I think that one of the ways that we must creatively address this um, um, power problem is ensuring that across board, for example, across the nation, you can determine that every part of this nation must have nothing less than 12 hours mm -hmm. supply per sure. day. Because what we have right now, there are places who, where indeed you have three, four days of broken service. Sure. In Wuse to here, there are offices that enjoy light for two, three days I mean, no shaking, or uh, maybe maybe one hour, maybe, and then it comes back one hour. Nobody's going to complain it, about, it's about that kind of It's very effective there. Very effective. You know, say two, I mean, and maybe some other places. Now, if you can have that, why don't we have a situation where across the nation, you have 12 hours, you're sure that you can have 12 hours or 10 mm -hmm. hours, and then those 12 hours are mapped out. They, they, they are presented in a timetable. 
So maybe from month to month or from quarter to quarter, you know that, okay, now, um, um, uh, Garuki, you're going to be having your 12 hours from 6 a.m. to 6 in the evening. And then you in Lagos, uh, in Badagri, you're going to be having yours from 8 a.m. to 8 That's uninterrupted. Uninterrupted. What that means is that you can plan your activities. You can arrange your activities in such a way that even when you don't have, you would have taken care of what you Things need to when do. Things when you had. Exactly. Because what it means is, okay, you have on the, on the domestic side, you have to iron your clothes. You know you are not going to have light from 8 p.m. So the clothes you know, before for tomorrow, that. you can take care of. And you're sure that by tomorrow, from 8 a.m. again, you can have that. What it also means is that the person who is going to have from 12 in the afternoon to maybe 12 uh, uh, midnight will also arrange his work. He can decide to stay in the office from 12 when there will be light. If his work is dependent on so much energy, he can de decide that me and my staff have to stay till 8 o'clock. Sure. He can tell the staff, don't come 8 a.m. in the morning. Resume at 10. And then from 12, we can do work consistently with light we have till 8 p.m. Sure. And then we can close. Everybody will understand that. And it makes that. more sense it when you come sense. in, not do you anything. Come in and you can do anything. Sure. So I think that that's what we need to do so that everybody can feel a sense of being a government. So you would, uh, um, you would um, uh, propose something like rationing exactly. of the light. Exactly. You can't. Uh, I mean, why should we say two people enjoy 24 hours, 72 hours, 96 hours, sure. 108 hours, and then consistently co good quality light? And then there's a place just maybe in Zuba. They can't have light even for six hours in a day. And sometimes for three days running, they don't even have any light. So sure. we must disperse. We must ensure that everybody feels a sense of belonging. That's why many times Nigerians cannot be patriotic. You don't have, you're not, you're not enjoying anything. Sure. And the little you are enjoying, you enjoy at the, you know, there's a, there's a scripture in Lamentations. It says they eat the they eat bread. At the at the risk of at the risk of their lives, something like that. They are fetchers of wood. I mean, they, you know, it's a terrible description. Sure. Uh -huh. That's and that's the description for a lot of Nigerians. Now, so why would somebody in Zuba, for example, and I'm citing Zuba. Zuba is still within the FCT. Sure. So if I cite Zuba within the FCT, what is the fate of somebody in Akaleri in in Bauchi State? What is the fate of somebody in downtown in Igara? In Edo State, what is the fate of someone in in a, a, a somewhere in Bokos, in in, 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 in Plateau, and so on and so forth? You you understand? So what's the what's the fate of somebody in Iju, in around Ogun, uh, Lagos area, in Ajuwon, in all those places? So I'm saying, government must show itself responsible to every Nigerian by ensuring that they feel a sense that. There's something called government. Yeah. It's the reason why you can't you can't get any form of patriotism. Nobody feels like uh, uh, you. The average yeah, American your your presence is country. not your presence is not, not felt self. as the government. Exactly. So now let's talk about um, the recapitalization. Would you say that? Would you say the FDI is being? Would you say the FDI is be should be? Would you say the recapitalization should, should be, be from the FDI or from national investors? No, I think that um, um, one of the things, uh, it's, it's actually, it's good if we get it from FDI, okay. uh, foreign dire direct investment. Okay. Uh, but the truth is that at the end, we'll get fleeced. Whether you like it or not, they will repatriate their profits. And that tells a whole lot on our economy again. It's like... Um, um, F4, 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 in my language. Mm, uh, which means? <laughs> <laughs> the only, the only has uh, walked and the only has eaten. Okay. Yeah. So, well, I mean, in the end, they leave us like we, we were, we were from the beginning. The end, they, I mean, they, this may not sound too good, but that's the truth. Sure. But if we have Nigerians with local capital who can put their resources down, first of all, is the fact that you would know that you have a sense of fulfillment that you are helping your country. Sure. But, you know, the challenge is this, that because we have a country that hardly honors obligations, that takes obligations with, I mean, with, with levity, and it, it would be easier to uh, not 
take Nigerian investors seriously, it will be much easier to throw them under the bus to do whatever they want to do with Nigerian investors than it would be with foreign direct investment and investors who will put all kinds of systems in place, in place. to ensure that money it succeeds, it, it the succeeds, money is not money is properly uh, appropriated sure. and, and deployed. So these are the di different uh, these things. So when you look at it back and front, maybe in the final analysis, it's better for the foreign direct investors. So at least we can get something, because if it, if it comes from national. Uh, uh, from nationals, the Nigerian nationals, Investors. the government is likely to trifle with it. And then bef before you know it, it will become political. Yes, it will become political. Sure. Somebody will begin to say, oh, in the first instance, how did he even get that money? Yeah, because you want to call, I mean, you want to kill the dog now, you begin to call it a bad name. Yeah, so you want to hang it, then you, you give it a bad name. So these are some, there are a whole lot of issues to look at. This program wouldn't be enough except we're having several of us <laughs> uh, segments yes yeah. so 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 i in the end what is critical is that we need investment in the sector we need huge investment uh, i had the opportunity to intervene and uh, to interview uh, dr sam amadi some years back about three years back uh, for our magazine uh, balance magazine and he did say even at that time that there was a death the public to, to do their farming and do everything. Oh uh -uh. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are entering bushes.